Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sew Batik, and today is Sunday, March 10th, and our topic is Batik Linen. I'm really excited about today's topic because one of my favorite fabrics to sew with and to wear is Batik Linen, and I realize I actually don't work with it enough. The last project we featured with our Batik Linen was the Fran pajama. And I'm gonna put a picture of it on here, but I don't wear it as a pajama, I wear it as a shirt because it is a classic shirt. It's like this simple collar and just a comfortable feel for a Batik Linen top. Well, I was thinking about that the other day and I said to myself, it's time for me to do another batik linen top. So I have this little area in our office that has a whole bunch of patterns that I really want to feature and I want to focus on. And so I went over to that grouping of patterns and I picked out this pattern and it's a simplicity pattern. It has this really funky number. <laughs> R10181, which should have been a dead giveaway <laughs> because I'm going to tell you a story. But I've really wanted to work on this pattern and this garment for quite some time. It is this beautiful linen dress that has a wonderful detail at the top with a form of a tie that's not really a tie, it's a decorative tie. Very straight fitting, pockets on the sides. And it also has an option for no tie and a top or a dress that is just a simple style top. So I grabbed this because it just reads linen. I put a note on this pattern that says make this out of linen. And so I took it, washed up this hand dyed ivy linen fabric and went to town sewing this whole thing up, videoing some of the steps along the way. I'm so pleased with this garment, absolutely pleased. So the other day I decided, okay, it's time to get the kit on the website. Let's start promoting our garment, this, this garment with all the tips that I came up with. I go over to another filing cabinet that has all of our patterns. There are none. So then I said, okay, let's take a look and see what Simplicity has available that we can get in stock and I'll just postpone this for a little while. Lo and behold, zero. <laughs> Simplicity has discontinued this garment. So then I'm just saying to myself, how long have I had this sitting on my desk? Obviously for quite some time. And so I rushed, we're gonna get into this in a little bit. So I said to myself, I cannot show this garment um, because I can't even offer the pattern, but I kind of decided against that. I'm going to share with you all of the learnings from making this garment because I think they will apply to any garment that you will make, whether it's using a simplicity pattern, whether it's using batik linen or not. So here are a few things that I really want to share with you. First of all, I am wearing the garment. I love it. I was able to size it properly. However, I'll talk about some changes that I would make on a second one, um, but I really, really love it. And let me describe this because you may, in your pattern collection, you might have a garment that is extremely similar to this. It's not, it's obviously not a unique design. It is a boat neck top. Let me kind of get my hair out of the way. It is a boat neck uh, neckline. It has a drop sleeve that ends right here. So this can be a sleeveless, I would consider it a sleeveless summer top as well, or three quarter length, you can make it even longer. And then it's just a simple, no darts, simple top for the front and the back. It's just very, very simple. It truly is the perfect top for myself to put on every day to come to work. That's why I think I really wanted to make this particular pattern. Whenever, I don't know about you, but whenever I start working on a project, besides figuring out my yardage and washing up the fabric, getting all of my pattern pieces prepped and getting it ready to go, I look at the 
how much is my seam allowance? How much do I, you know, what's the play that I really have if I make the garment, if I cut the garment out too small or too big, what, what's my seam allowance? The seam allowance in the pattern, five eighths inch seam. And as I'm working through this garment, I realize that because I remember reading my pattern pieces, I realized that in a couple of places, the markings and the dots that you're supposed to put where you connect the collar facing or the neckline facing, where you connect the sleeve, they didn't look like five eighths of an inch. So I went back to my pattern pieces and here's one of the pattern pieces. This is the front, which is positioned on the fold. And then here is our drop sleeve opening and the shape of the top. On the pattern piece itself is a different seam allowance. This is three eighths of an inch seam allowance around our neckline. And then there was another spot too where it was three eighths of an inch. And nowhere in the pattern did it say three eighths of an inch seam. I think sometimes we overlook what's really written on the pattern itself because had I not, had I actually transferred this onto some of my tracing paper, which I use almost exclusively because I never want to cut out the pattern piece itself. Sometimes I don't really look at what that says. I'm just tracing my lines, tracing my markings, my dots, my connector markings, all of that. Um, I, I really don't look at all the words and maybe that's to my detriment. I probably should be doing that every single time and now I will. But I really was surprised that the seam allowance was written only on the pattern pieces and not in the instructions. So I actually, through making this garment, really learned a lot. That was one of my learnings is always pay attention to what is written on your pattern pieces. And the other thing that I do, and Simplicity does this sometimes and sometimes they don't, but this garment actually has the finished garment measurements written and printed on the pattern pieces themselves. So you can take a tape measure and you can measure to make sure that that is actually going to fit you properly. And it's a good reminder that if you need to grade your pattern in any way, that now is the time to do that because this has the bust measurements as a finished garment. So you know how much ease you would like to have. And at the hem of this garment, it gives the finished measurements, which I never ever see on independent designer patterns, um, not even on some of the McCall's or New Look or Vogue have any of this information. So that was one thing that I also wanted to mention is really pay attention to what's on your pattern pieces themselves and every single one of the markings. The other pattern pieces that had the three eighths of an inch, of course, are the matching facings. And this is the one that really got me because I was fusing my um, Silk Envy interfacing to the facing piece because I just wanted a little tad bit of stability. That's when I saw the 3 8 inch seam and realized I needed to go back to every single pattern piece to make sure I wasn't missing something. So food for thought, make sure that you have all of your information in front of you before you start constructing because there's nothing worse than thinking to yourself, why is this collar not fitting properly? Well, it's because the seam allowance was adjusted. The construction of this garment is very, very simple. Let me share with you uh, the pattern pieces really, really quickly. So we have our front, which is on the fold. And this is, as you can see, is a very boxy top. I actually graded it from a medium to a large at the hip area. We have our front and back facings, which do need interfacing. So I used our Silk Envy. Here is the sleeve, which is very full and you can lengthen or shorten your sleeve as usual. And this is actually one of those garments where the sleeve is attached flat, which I love. It's super easy to do and it fit perfectly. 
And then the back of the garment is very similar to the front where it is on the fold and very simple drop sleeve shoulder and the form that you would like to have for the shape of your garment. When I construct working with batik linen, I look at it two different ways. I always have to make this decision ahead of time. And I'm sure you do the same thing too, is I take a look at the construction of the garment, whether or not I can jump to my serger and just simply serge everything up, or if I also need my sewing machine. For this garment, I was unsure of the fit. I wanted to make sure that if I made a mistake, I could take out my side seams. I could either reduce the side seam or take it in more. So I wasn't gonna jump to the serger. So I took every pattern piece, not every pattern piece, the, fr the, the front, the back, the sleeves, not the facings. And I went over to the serger and I simply edge finished with the serger, a four thread overlock with my knife not engaged. So I just simply went right along the edge and I finished off each edge. I just wanted it to be done and when the garment was constructed afterwards, it'll just look absolutely beautiful. We'll press our seams open. Everything will be finished beautifully. And it allows me to adjust any of the fit after I try it on for the first time, just to make sure. The only other thing that I did with this garment is something that I really don't do very often. I misjudged the length of this garment. I wanted it to be just slightly longer. As you know, I really love kind of a longer feel to a garment. I don't wear things very short. I just like them longer and I'm five foot seven, so um, I need length. Well, I didn't allow for the right amount of length because this particular hem allowance is two and a quarter inches. So had I left this the way that I had cut it and folded it up two and a quarter inches, it really would have made for quite a short top. I did follow those instructions for my sleeve. So I do have a very thick hem on the sleeve, two and a quarter inches. But what I did for the actual hem was really very fun. And I learned this from my friend, Kathy. She often will take a bias strip of fabric attach it to the hem and then use that as your hem. So you really aren't removing any length from your garment, but yet you're still finishing the hem of your garment in a very nice way. So I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm going to do exactly what Kathy always does. I shouldn't say always. I don't know that, but um, what she taught me. So I had a little bit of ivy fabric left over. Uh, I had about about 12 inches of the fabric remaining. What I decided to do was to add a hem facing. I wanted it to be substantial like the two and a quarter inches would have been. And so here's what I did. In creating my hem facing, I needed the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece. I decided that I wasn't going to make a bias strip to put on as my hem because the lower edge of my front and back pieces are relatively straight. I didn't see the need to do anything on the bias. I really modeled this after how the back facing and the front facing at the neckline are designed, which is simply following the same curve of each one of those pattern pieces. Let's work from the back pattern piece. And I decided that I wasn't going to stitch two and a quarter inch hem allowance. What I decided to do was I had enough fabric, so you have to work with the fabric that you have available to you. But I decided to measure three inches up from the edge of each of the front and the back pattern pieces, three inches. So I measured and marked all the way along 
the hem and then drew a curved line to make sure that this facing would match the curve of the hem itself. I decided just to mark it as well for 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to make sure that I was actually doing the right measurement here for my hem facing. So I did this piece plus the front and I cut those two pieces out of the linen fabric. I'm going to show you an image of how they look together. So much like you would a neckline facing, I sewed the two pieces together using my 5 8 inch seam allowance and then I with right sides together attached that facing to the bottom of my garment. I decided to open up the garment so that you can see exactly how this hem facing was attached. With the facing sewn together so we have a, a round hem facing I attached it with right sides together using a half inch seam allowance pressed that seam towards the facing itself and then understitched it to make sure that once this garment is right side out that the hem facing will stay inside this is exactly the same step that you take when you attach the neckline facing to your garment we always want to understitch it to make sure that everything stays in place it's a wonderful finishing touch and then what I did on the other end of my facing is I pressed that one inch under and then pinned it to the wrong side of the garment, just top stitched it using a little wider stitch. I think this is like a 3.0 inch or 3.0 stitch. And I just followed the fold line all the way around and I had very good matching thread. So you can't even really tell that there is a deep hem facing on the garment. But this is what allowed me to keep the length of my garment the, that length because that was the length I really wanted to have. And then still have a really, really nice weighty finish to the hem. While I have the top open here uh, with the wrong side out, I want to show you what it does look like when we edge finish with an overlock stitch on a serger. Now, you can also do this overlock stitch with your sewing machine if you have that overlock stitch or a decorative stitch just to finish this off. And that can be as simple as a zigzag as well, but it really gives it a very nice finish. The other thing that I do, and I never really talk about this, I guess, is you might see here that, and I think in this particular pattern, there were a couple of notches, matching notches along the way. Well, I, I sort of cover those up when I overlock stitch the edges of the pattern pieces before I assemble the garment. But you can sort of see where those notches are. What's good about this too is that you, we've already sealed that off so that your threads and your open notches on a linen or anything that might ravel is really secured. I also take and add more clips as I go around this curve before I edge stitch it and edge seal it with the overlocking uh, stitch on my serger. So there are maybe three or four additional clips in here that I make before I even serge it. And I do that because I really do want this piece of the garment to move. And if I were to have sewn this with my serger all the way around, you can't necessarily clip and make those clip marks because you're going to be cutting right through your threads. I do that clipping knowing that I want to clip it in the future. So you always have to think ahead, but I just clip it ahead of time and then serge it and you still have the movement that you would have if you had not finished it that way ahead of time. I just think it looks really, really finished. And also with the neckline, I use the serger to finish off the outside uh, edge of the neckline facing and then I've started using these cute little sewing labels. I just think they're so much fun and so individual and we finally added a whole bunch of these to our website. I'm sure you guys do that all the time but for me it was just, just something new that I really wanted to do and I think it's really fun to say 
something really fun on a tag. So that's the inside of my garment. Okay, I changed. Um, <laughs> we're gonna talk about this garment in one second, but I really wanna wrap up this particular top. And, and first, I apologize for not having this pattern available, but it is a basic top. And, you know, we can disregard the dress portion of that pattern, but I really do love the top. And I think we can find another pattern out there in the market that has an exact same footprint and layout as this one does. Now with our batik linen, let's jump into that just a little bit. Our linen is 54 inches wide. We market it as 54 inches, even though it is slightly wider than that, just to be consistent because manufacturing and, and producing yardage from time to time, we always wanted it to be at least 54 inches wide. Then I made size, I started with a medium and then graded it to a large. And a large for this particular top was a yard and five eighths. When I pre-washed our fabric using a synthropole, and I used warm water with a cool rinse, with an extra rinse, and I put it on medium in our dryer, and it shrunk about an inch and a half or so. It was not two inches, but it was like an inch and a half. So from that yard and five A's, take off an inch and a half, and then I had 12 inches left over to work with after I'd cut out my pattern pieces. So there's enough fabric there that allowed me to have enough fabric, which was very, very good for the uh, hem facing that I added to the garment. That is my very own top <laughs> that we can't make any more of, but hopefully you love the color green. It's a beautiful shade of hand dyed ivy. Let's talk about the garment I'm now wearing. Okay, since I got really panicked about not having patterns for that top and I decided, okay, I got to make another top. What can I make up really, really fast? And so I took our Simplicity 9707, which we just did an episode on, not Oh, a couple weeks ago. Let me grab the shirt so you can see this. This is the Batik Rayon garment. It's the, I'll try to put up a picture too of me wearing this garment. I wasn't going to put it on today because I'm wearing a linen version, but it is the longer version, which is A on this pattern cover, which is really what attracted me to this pattern. As you can see, I fall in love with pattern uh, jackets based off of the garment that the model is wearing and how it looks on her. And that might not be always the perfect way to do it, but that's what attracts me. And so <laughs> that's what I selected. And I made it out of this uh, Batik Rayon, which is our flock together motif in the shade of uh, Jubilee Red. Let me share this with you because it is the same garment I'm wearing. It has a back pleat, it has a double yoke, a long sleeve with a beautifully finished cuff, buttons going down the front with a very stylish collar, very simple collar to add. It is just a simple one piece collar so it doesn't have a collar stand and it can basically be any length that you would like it to be. I decided that I could quickly make this garment. I took home fabric and again it's batik linen because I just really am in a linen mood and I took home this batik linen which is the Medora Flora motif in the shade of chrome. I wanted something that wa was easy to wear with dark jeans and just really really simple. I was able to sew this up in a day which shocks me but I really was focused and I just really wanted to get this done to share with you another linen garment. This is View D, which is the shorter, more traditional length top. And I did a couple things with this particular top. The size is exactly the same as the first garment that was made. I shortened the sleeves 
two inches. For some reason, simplicity patterns, and I think I mentioned this on that video, simplicity patterns have a much longer sleeve. I took two inches off. It might've been slightly too much, but I like where the cuff lands. It just seems to fit it perfect for myself. I was going to put a white turtleneck on today, but I really wanted you to see the top without anything else underneath it. I did not opt for the pocket on the front. You can put a pocket on it as well. And for those of you who did purchase this pattern and the garment kit for the rayon, you already have the pattern. And I can honestly tell you that making a second one out of linen is a breeze if you've made the first one. The length is 27 inches, which is exactly what I really love the length of the garment to be. I was thinking about all of the different things that I would like to share with you on this particular garment. I really couldn't think of anything that we hadn't talked about before. I did do one thing. I videoed how you can attach the double yoke using the burrito method. So let's jump over to that. On the cutting table, I have already sewn the yoke facing and the back facing to the back pattern piece. I've also pressed that seam towards the yoke facing and surged the edge just to have a really nice complete look. Next, what we're going to do is pin with right sides together the front pattern pieces and the yoke facing. Let's take this over to the sewing machine and sew our 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're back at the cutting table. And next, what we're going to do is roll the front panels and the back up towards our stitch lines, up towards the neckline. And I will tell you that you need to learn from my experience. <laughs> it is so much easier to roll both the back and the front pieces together in a very, very tight tube. You'll see here that I'm rolling them individually and I have actually no idea why I did it that way. So roll them together and it will make it so much easier to slide the fabric through the arm opening after we have sewn our facings together here. But the next step is to pin the back and the front yoke together. And then we're going to go over to the sewing machine and again, using our 5 8 inch seam allowance, we'll stitch our yoke back to the yoke facing. Now the fun begins. We get to pull the fabric all the way through the little opening there in the shoulder. And just, you know, the one thing to remember when working with linen or rayon is to really just be gentle and uh, ease the fabric through that opening. And again, had I put this in one complete roll, it would have been a little bit easier. So now we have our front two panels sewn to the facing and the back panel, of course, was sewn first. And so I'm gonna lay this out so that you can see it flat and open. And the next step is really to take this over to your ironing station and press the facings flat. The yardage that I started with for this garment being a different width of fabric for uh, shirt D was two yards of our linen. And I think it is extremely safe to say that you can follow the 60 inch wide yardage requirements for this garment. If you have this pattern at home and you decide to make another top using the linen, definitely follow the 60 inch wide fabric requirements because I started with two yards Again, following my pre-washing instructions and just making sure that I have enough yardage. 
and it was perfect. This time though, I had nothing left over, like nothing. So it was maybe a little too close, but I started with two yards. The hem on this garment was simply turned. I surged the edge all the way around, and then I turned it up five eighths of an inch and top stitched. So it was a very, very basic finish. If you'd like to add a bias strip all the way around the edge, folding the unfinished edge of your bias strip under and then top stitching, that gives it a very nice finish on the hem of the garment as well. So that is another way to look at finishing the hem of this garment as well. But I really, really am so excited that this unexpected mistake turned into a second garment, which is fantastic. <laughs> I am getting so ready for all of these wonderful, cool linen tops and to wear them now into the spring. It's going to be so much fun. You will see on our website another garment kit for Simplicity 9707. And this time it will be out of the linen. So make sure that you look for Batik Rayon or Batik Linen as your choice. If you have the pattern, then all you really will need is anywhere from a yard and five eighths to two yards of our Batik Linen to make your top. And again, this is view D. So this is the shorter top. If you need yardage for the longer view A, you will need anywhere from a yard and seven eighths to two and three eighths yards. So I would just make sure that you have two and a half yards of fabric to make the longer version of this top. And you need about a quarter yard, nope, a half a yard of Envy Silk, which is 20 inches wide. And you'll have your cuffs and your collar interfaced. And this top version took seven half inch buttons. In the sewing room, I have two projects. One, I am still working on editing all of the steps needed to make the open wide pouch, which is one of these, which is a Biani pattern. And it's a simple, very simple pouch that has mesh, separators and pockets inside with a simple zipper closure. I am almost done with this particular step-by-step uh, -step tutorial. And then I have fabric cut out for the Delaware jacket, which is a new pattern from Itch to Stitch. And Kenna is so busy making all of her patterns. And this one I just fell in love with, as I had mentioned last week. So I selected the flock together motif and this is the colorway of natural sapphire and this is our five ounce canvas it's pre-washed i have it ready to lay out all of the pattern pieces my pattern pieces are cut and ready to go so this will be my project for this next week i had to order the cord locks because this particular jacket has a drawstring that goes around the inside, or I did see somebody putting it on the outside as well, but on the inside. And so I've inventoried um, cord locks, which is so new for me. So this is gonna be really a lot of fun to use. I have my zipper ready to go, and now I just need to get the buttons all ready to go, but this will be fun to do. I don't know if I'll do a step-by-step -step on any of this one, but I will video some things that might have been new for me that I think would be great to share. That is our Batik Linen for today. Project's coming up, and do take a moment to Send us some comments below. I really appreciate reading all of your comments. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on your favorite social media channels. They're all in the description below and all of our links to any notion, any fabric, any project that I spoke about today is also going to be in the description below. But jump over to our website and make sure you sign up for our e-newsletters. We send a newsletter once or twice a week. It really is to share what we've been up to. We try to feature one of our Batik fabric collections. And it might be Batik cotton for a backing. It might be Batik rayon or linen or jersey for garments or canvas for garments. 
or it might be a bag making project. That actually brings me to one more idea that Bruce and I have, and we were talking about this the other day. You know, as we grow our boutique fabric collections and our boutique offerings, we really do hit a wide range of interests to all of you, but not every one of you may be interested in quilting or maybe interested in garment making or bag making or home decorating. There might be something that you're just simply focused on individually. We are going to start preparing and sending out newsletters and email information to you that is focused only on your area of interest. And if you're interested in all of them, you'll get all of the emails. But we want you to know that they're coming and they're going to be individually created. But there's only one way for us to understand what your interest is, and that is to send out a survey. So look in your email box, and if you aren't a newsletter subscriber, sign up, because we want to get your information as well. You also get a 15% discount on a future order for any new email subscriber. And if you have, if you're an, if you're an email subscriber and have never used that 15% coupon, you should use it. <laughs> it's a really, really good way to save on something special. But we want to understand your interests. And so we're gonna send out a survey. If you fill out the survey, you'll be eligible for a giveaway. We're gonna have three major giveaways. So look for that in your inbox. That's just really gonna help us understand you and make sure that we're providing the right level of information for you as well. Thank you so, so much for spending the time with us, for sewing, smiling, and sharing with us along the way. <laughs>